I think in many ways people in the Dudley neighborhood have seen home not as commodity, but as something that should be part of hum human rights. Going once, going twice, say goodbye to your house. Local foreclosure rates skyrocket as the real estate market continues to cool. The story has been with us for some time. In Massachusetts alone, over 12,000 properties are in foreclosure. But in the Dudley Street Neighborhood Land Trust, where homes are owned by low-income residents, not one is in foreclosure due to the credit crisis. Why not? 25 years ago, hundreds of homes in the Dudley Street neighborhood were being torched for profit by absentee landlords. The 1,300 lots left behind became a dumping ground for Boston's trash. They picked this community to do their illegal dumping. Then the community organized. They created the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative. They challenged City Hall and came up with a new solution, a land trust to build new homes that would be permanently affordable for low-income residents. They were talking about home as a place that they wanted to be to find shelter, to find a good neighborhood, to find people who uh, wanted to share the same values with them, that they can interact in, 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 in ways that are healthy. My name is John Barrows. I've been a resident all my life, 17 years. I hope to represent the age bracket which, which is seriously lacking here and I'd like to see some things change and more youth participation from kids from my age. Thank you. It's interesting. When I was, uh, when I was younger at the organization, I never really thought of uh, organizing as a profession. You know, I was a resident and this was my neighborhood and it was about improving my neighborhood and believing in the value of improving your neighborhood, of being involved. You know, until one day it clicked and then some nine years later I'm sitting here as executive director. My name is Jason Webb, I'm 14 years old. I have devoted half of my life to the community. The youth basically muscled themselves into the room and said we're a part of this conversation too. And now you have the youth that grew up in the organization now running it. More than 500 vacant lots on the land trust have been transformed into homes, gardens, parks, schools, even a town common. More than 200 homes have been built on the land trust and are already occupied. The last 18 in the original community plan are ready to be sold. This is a great opportunity for you as new neighbors and also for, for us as a community. A recent DSNI lottery offered them to pre-qualified buyers. Geneva, Miami, Dorchester. Okay. Almost <laughs> to get wines in Dorchester. Never had a chance to have our own home. Thank God. This is like a dream come true. This is where I grew up. This is my home. This is where it's going to be. Because they're going to help me. <laughs> you know, this community's, you know, uh, dreams a lot. There's still a ton of challenges, still a ton of in uncertainty but a new opportunity comes with the $113 million Kroc Community Center, soon to be built on this empty six and a half acre lot in the middle of Dudley. We, we've been planning a community center for the last 20 years. And so folks continue to say to me, is it really gonna happen? I continue to hear that from the neighbor. The Kroc Center breaks ground in June 2009, but how will it reflect the community's vision? The Salvation Army has promised to hire a diverse workforce for the construction, but will those promises be met? Boston has a, a job policy law. We must have 50% Boston residents, 25% minority, 10% women, okay? So I want to make sure that you're talking the talk, you got to walk the walk. Now. The community also needs to develop young leaders 
and continue organizing its young residents. The SNI, we have a real challenge to try to organize, outreach to, involve, and engage all of the youth in the neighborhood. Continue to train them, continue to allow them to understand, see, feel, experience, and grow in DS9. One of the biggest challenges to the community is the current economic and housing crisis. Many see the Dudley Land Trust as a possible solution to the growing number of home foreclosures in the neighborhood. So not all the homes in the neighborhood are on the land trust. So although we can protect the homes on the neighborhood from foreclosure, we actually have a really high rate of foreclosure in Roxbury and Dorchester in general. And so we haven't been immune to that as a neighborhood. And in fact, we're very uh, worried about the uh, types of issues that can come out of having abandoned foreclosed homes in our neighborhood. And there's a real threat that the foreclosure crisis can take us back a few decades in terms of potential drug homes, in terms of some prostitution, uh, some places for, for kids to form gangs and hide out. We want to acquire some of the homes in the neighborhood that have been foreclosed on to rehab and resell them. The credit markets have to open up in order for us to continue to move forward the dream of having more homeowners in affordable housing in Dudley. How does a community like Dudley keep looking forward and protect what it's fought long and hard to win? Facing neighborhood foreclosures on the one hand and the hopes of the next generation on the other, the Dudley community and DSNI stand between opportunity and vulnerability. How does a community gain the ground it needs to sustain hope and pass on a legacy of community vision, struggle, and change?